raised an issue in Parliament when you were contributing to the budget debate. And it was about, uh, well, government's management of not necessarily the expenditure of the military, but also the way they were making allocations to the military and the other security agencies. Uh, and then the conclusion that we got from the media report was that you were painting a picture of some level of insecurity as a result of the posture of government by way of uh, the management of the allocations <coughs> to the security services. Yeah, my brother, I'll come to that. But quickly, let me, let me, let me, let me <laughs> talk about how my, 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 my brother, the MP, reacted to uh, my, the statement that I made. Hmm. But I give, I, I give you only 30 he, seconds, please. Yeah, yeah, he disagreed with me at some certain point. But he, at, the, at the end of his submission, he, he was buttressing the point that I made. Hmm. I am saying that there are certain politicians who, who are corrupt. That's what the, the, the public sees. And they lump all of us together. And I gave an example of what happens in Parliament when we disagree with majority on any some government policies. At times we even walk out. And mm. they, when there's a vote, they carry the day. And at the end of the day, they say, the whole uh, Parliament approved that thing. That is what I was making. And he has also battled that point. So I don't see why he disagrees with me. When at the end of the day, <laughs> you've come to compliment what I have said. Coming back to uh, the question that you raised, mm. uh, I didn't uh, say that uh, it poses a security uh, a threat or a state of insecurity. I, did, I, didn't say, I didn't say you said it. I'm saying that if you do analysis of the media report, it gave an indication like that. I didn't say you said it. Definitely, you didn't say that. No, that one is not a media, I mean media analysis. It was said in parliament, but parliament. The minister said it, and then the speaker also said it, that it has uh, security implications. When I go further to mention, uh, to, uh, to, to, to uh, go forward for the, the area that I was hitting on, uh, of, of, of my debate and contribution, mm. my brother, it has nothing to do with any security uh, uh, threat. We have all the ministries, the sector ministries in Ghana, who complain about owing contractors. We have all of these things. And Defense and Interior Committee, of which I'm a, a, a deputy ranking, we are the mouthpiece of the security agencies. It is always reflected in the budget that they owe contractors since 2012. 2013, 2014. They carried the nothing from 2013 to 2014, and they are still not paid. We have heard that some of the contractors are threatening to send the, the, the security agencies to court. We had uh, 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 somebody who, who has uh, uh, given out his building to the police that he was taking them to court somewhere in Kovodia, uh, uh, the area. Mm. We have heard. On several occasions, we have noticed on several occasions, and we have been briefed as a committee by the security agencies that they don't even have money to buy fuel for their cars, to buy common tires, tires, and most of their cars are packed on stones for lack of funds. They are only contractors who supply drugs to 37. They are only contractors who supply drugs to military, uh, to uh, police hospital. This is what I am talking about. It has nothing to do with any security implications. It has nothing to do with, uh, 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 in, in fact, drawing the attention of the security agencies who already know. They are in the system and they are, they are briefing us anytime we go around to do our officer responsibility our parliament. They brief us. Okay. They give us reports. All right. Your point has been made there. But we have also been joined by Dr. Ali Duseidu. He's a political science lecturer at the University of Ghana. Uh, good morning to you, Dr. Seidu. Now, particularly the concerns being raised by um, okay, the concerns being raised by um, Major Odro, uh, particularly on the indebtedness of the military to several contractors, and the way government also is handling the allocations to the various security agencies. Uh, if you do a, a media analysis of it, it tends to give an indication that well, government's inability to uh, perhaps also carry out his obligations would inure to some level of insecurity in a way because they can carry out their duties responsibly. Now on second thought also, it tends also to um, descend into the realm of political debates 
where one of the political sides will want to score some political points because the government of the day is not caring for the security apparatus adequately. And, and that perhaps also has an implications on whether government is responsible to the military or the security, etc. Uh, to, to thank you very much, Mr. Walker. To begin with, you can only call your, you can only call yourself a sovereign state if you have the power to protect the integrity of the state that you live in. And apart from the democratic governance systems that we all practice as states, the most important institution is the security institution. They maintain law and order internally, and they also protect the territorial mm -hmm. integrity of the state. So the military is a very important, crucial part of the legitimacy and sovereignty of Ghana. The, the alloc authoritative allocation of resources mm. by government of the day has to do with a lot of variables. It has to do with the present needs of the institutions concerned in relation to the capacity of the country. I think the, the, the needs of the military should be non-negotiable because they have been the most important focal point of our defense. And we live in, in an interrelated, interconnected world where security threats can be carried over, even given the power's nature of the borders of the African continent. That security threats could be carried over from one particular country to the other. And even we have elements within who may be sleeping threat to the country. So resourcing our military is very crucial to defending the territorial integrity of the state. Having said this, you also have to work on that the, the available resources of the state, the very little resources of the state, are, are, are engulfed in a competing demand for, for allocation. And we all know the country is facing a lot of economic challenges, but I don't think that is an excuse for the government not to provide for the needs of the military. And I just want to link this to the Afrobarometer thing that was released yesterday, the third round. It suggested that public perception of the military is intact. This is an institution that is highly disciplined, that doesn't entertain corruption, and that is always up to the task. So as compared to other institutions where they can, they can maneuver their way through by, by empowering themselves financially through corrupt practices, the military don't have that advantage. And even by the nature of their training, it becomes very difficult for them to do it. So they rely solely on budgetary allocation from the state. And if this is not forthcoming, that's going to have a very huge impact on their ability to, to perform their commitment patriotism, and then the sacrificial attitude in them will definitely win because if you are putting up your best and there's not that element of reciprocity mm. from your employer or the person you are working for, mm. then definitely you, you, you tend to, 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 not, to not be up to the task okay. when you are called to do so. All right. It, it, it's a lengthy contribution you made, though, and I have um, now three of you, one in studio, two online. And so I have to go back to you, and, and Ibrahim, you have to uh, g give me some space here. Just uh, one more okay. question. Uh, Major Odro, at, at, at what point do you think that the debate you contributed or the contribution to the debate that you made could also trigger some political tentacles or could be the onset of some political debate between the two parties, the ruling NDC and the MPP, in the milieu of the current debate we're having, when you know definitely that the resources of the country are constrained in a certain way, and so definitely provision to whichever institution in the country, be it education ministry or the military or the police, could be facing some consequences or whatsoever. Uh, my brother, my contribution on the floor of parliament and uh, did not any way suggest that I was being a partisan. 
I did it. I'm not I suggesting was, that as well. Yes, too. yes. Politics. What you say? You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, put, you are doing politics with this. You are doing politics with that. Our understanding is that uh, it's partisan. Otherwise, what we do in Parliament there? We are not, not doing geography. We are not doing history there. We are doing politics in Parliament. But our understanding of doing politics or something suggests that you are being partisan. You want to draw uh, 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 the, the ruling government into such a, such a situation for you to take advantage of it for your side. That is the, the, the understanding. But that, is, that wasn't the, the, the situation yesterday. The situation was that I was drawing the attention of government that the security agencies are only contracted. That was all. Only contracted for drugs, for fuel, for other uh, uh, contractual uh, uh, provisions that they, they did for the security agencies for which they have not paid. Releases that are supposed to have been made to the security agencies have not gone through. This is all that I was talking about. Okay. It be, has nothing to do be, with be, 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 Being a former soldier, um, all these scenarios you're, you're drawing up, no, I'm not saying they are, uh, your own figment of imagination, but these are real. They could, they, they, they could be, uh, well, pointers to some level of insecurity, because if the military, the police don't have enough uh, resources to work with, they, they, will, they will do nothing at all. Now, there would also be some loathing or some abhorrence for government for not providing for their needs. That is very, very important. You hit the nail right at the head. Uh, what, what, I, what I said may even suggest that the police may not have adequate resources to, make, uh, uh, to provide adequate security for the citizenry. The police will not have fuel to, to, to move their vehicles. So if they're supposed to cover the whole Accra in one night everywhere to see that armed robbers will not be on our throat, they will not do. They will not have that resources to go. Mm, okay. And that is why we have to look at. Major point made. That, that will be the implication. Major point I made. Be on the line. Just be on the line. I know you have a lot more down your down, down your, your your throat. You want to uh, you want yeah. to bring out. But uh, as far as we're concerned, yesterday, uh, following the debates and the contribution in Parliament and by Major Odro, the Speaker and 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 the leadership of Parliament. And the majority side decided to say to make those conclusions. Well, this was a security issue, and needed not brought out in the meantime, and this would have to be dealt with, etc. The point is, what is a public issue is a public issue. What is of public interest is of public interest. Yeah, Roland. I think yesterday I was in Parliament when Major raised this issue. I'm not a security expert, but I was the first person to raise a point of order against him, telling him that where he was going was a very delicate issue. You mean sensitive? Sensitive issue. Okay. And the go government should make the provisions right. And that right. underscores the very reason why the military, defense and interior budget and all security issues are discussed behind closed doors. And he is the ranking member of the Committee of Defense. So clearly speaking, he has every influence and every opportunity to make those sentiments reach the powers that be. That is why he is at that high office in parliament. And coming from the military himself, he has every experience, knowing where to hit and at what time. But what we are seeing, the very reason why we don't discuss this thing on the plenary is that to be forewarned is to be forearmed. And if you say that we should discuss issues pertaining to our military, that should any country rise against Ghana today, our military will not have even vehicle ties to even fight against those things. Clearly speaking, if somebody has evil ambitions against you, this is an opportune time for them to rise against you. So that's where you're coming from so in your argument. Clearly speaking, that's why we were saying that, no, Major, these are issues. That is the main reason why we discuss the military defense and interior budget behind closed doors. So clearly speaking, and you have opportunity, when we come to the estimates, then you bring those issues, then we discuss them. Okay. But if on the plenary about 120 countries are listening to us on, us on air, and this is the very first time that you are bringing it. If you are to go, Roland, if you are to go to the defense, uh, defense and interior ministry, then we compare NDC and MPP. That's what the challenge I told yesterday. Clearly, Ahmed. you see that the NDC government Ahmed. has invested more in the military than any other and government. Ahmed. How many aircraft have you with the You are talking about... Compare just one. You are then you cannot say that we are owing them on food. You are, you we don't open this... It should open you are talking. When you we are get there behind closed okay. doors, we right. open them up. Right. Then we'll see what facts that all you right. have to come and compete all with right. us. All right. Now, the, the point you make is good, but 
what do you think should be of public interest and not of public interest? That the military issues are sensitive, and as a result of that... First of all, who is the public? The public are represented by members of parliament. Well, the public so is the also out there. And so the, the, public, the, the public that you are representing need to know. Exactly. The, the fact that you know doesn't mean that the public have, you are representing And that is why know. we have a way of telling... Ibrahim, you made your point. Dr. Alidu. Yes, Mr. Walker. Now, you will be the arbiter for us. Do you think that it was right for the member of parliament, uh, Dr. Uh, Major Dominic Odro, or Major Retired okay. Derek Odro. Okay, Major Retired Derek Odro, to raise this issue before the plenary. I mean, it should be this in the public domain at all? Should, should this, uh, this be up for Banku and Okro and, and for all the discussions as far as we're concerned? Just in plain language, really. Security issue is a political issue. And politicians that win power will have to make sure that they provide for the need of the security institution because they depend the territorial integrity of this country among other functions. So it takes political will to be able to do that. And that political commitment comes from the government of the day because that is the government of the day controls the resources of the state. And two, if it concerns the state and concerns the people who have voted the government into power, it is important that the people know the state under which the military is operating. I, I don't think we should politicize this in terms of which party did what and which party didn't do what. Every party that wins power has the obligation to cater for the needs of all sectors and stakeholders within the country, including the military. Mr. Walker, in time past, we have seen the, the role of the military in our democratic dispensation. And most of the instances that they have cited, some of them were even as plenty as alleged corrupt practices and total neglect of the military. We have lived, we are now living at an era where this is now becoming history. So we don't have to give them an opportunity to behave in ways that they will never think they will behave. Well, good point Look you make there. In, in Burkina Faso, in Cote d'Ivoire recently, um, the military uh, occupied the main street, blocked the military because... Dr. Yes. Uh, stop on your example. Now, good point you make there. And we know our history back in the late 60s, 70s, etc. Now, do you think that hindsight, with all the history that is behind us and all the things we're currently witnessing around us, um, an issue like whether government is perhaps meeting its budgetary obligations to the security services should be a matter of public interest and should it be a matter of public discussion? Yeah, I think it, it should be because we live in, in democracy. In the current and atmosphere of, of a polarized political I think, state? I think it was, was in always before the floor of parliament. Well, it was raised, but the question from the other side was, or the concerns from the other side was that, well, it was a sensitive issue. Because if you put it in the public domain, it could be politicized. Mr. Walker, please, the light's not clear. I can't hear you. The, the concern from the other side. Can you hear me now? No, we seem to have Hello? You. Can you hear me, sir? Uh, yeah, it's better now. Okay. The concern from the other side was that, as Dr. Uh, as, uh, Major Odro put, put it out there in the plenary, and this would be pick, picked up by the media. It could be up for public discussion. And following that could be politicized based on the type of political debate that it could generate. I, I think to fight for the needs of the military is a political issue in the first place. Even though every security issue are political issues. And you see developed democracies like the United States of America and Britain, those issues are always brought on the run line and heavily discussed. One way or the other, it puts pressure on the government to act. Mm. That is one thing. And government should always be accountable to the people. Mm. And if and one of the tenets of accountability is, is letting the people who are being led know what is actually going on. So if, if we shy away from discussing those issues, for the fear that it should be published, uh, sorry, it should be politicized. 
then we are doing great disservice to the people that government are supposed to serve. Okay, good we point you make. This for government to do these these businesses. Your and point has been made. Sir. Those resources are, are made. Yeah, uh, Major Odro. Yeah, my brother. In w w being a former military person, a military officer, and having gone through the rank and file of the military, knowing the psyche of the military and the history behind us, do you think, well, all intentions of yours well and good, that the debate you raised yesterday, if put in the public domain and up for public discussion, uh, could in any way degenerate into political scores being, perhaps being won by other side? Especially when we have... Uh, a, car a current uh, polarized political atmosphere and election 2016 not too far away will, will make the government look bad well you are not caring for the security agencies and as a result of that you're not the right uh, party to rule yeah my brother it is not to make the government look bad i'm not saying that's it your is... intention i'm saying that no no no, no. i'm not saying that if that is the intention of somebody or just how somebody also reads into what my submission it is rather to make the government sit up there, there's no sensitivity about what I said. It was just on the way to have to take care of the military for them to perform. The budget is a public document. If you don't want it, don't put it there. The way to restore the armed forces, the policy that you have for the security agencies, you have to put down there. You see, Bagara was saying that so long, uh, uh, we don't even discuss uh, 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 the defense budget. In, 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 in the, the floor of parliament. That is not true. This is my third time in parliament. And it was only one occasion that we said we're not going to discuss this. And I called that in not to be discussed in public because it bordered on, uh, it bordered on uh, the, the acquisition of uh, logistics, weapons, armed, armor cars. Mm. And it came up even describing the caliber and then the the, the firepower of the weapon, the acquisition of a ship, never a ship, and I said no way. What's the difference between what's the difference between what's the difference between that one and this very debate? But food, 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 food for the, the security agencies to eat, medicine to take care of their their, their, their medical needs needs to be mentioned in in, in the floor of parliament. Major Odro, you have to know that they, they have to give priority to that uh, institution. Major Odro, it has nothing to do with uh, 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 any sensitivity to uh, military or uh, security agencies' uh, 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 position. No, okay. that's what I'm talking about. All right, oh, okay. I, I wanted to come to you now. I'll go to Dr. Seidu. Yes, yes, Mr. Walker. Language is important. For example, um, we're hearing uh, Major Odro saying, "Food, no food." Food, no food. Now, the point is, when it gets to the public space, it will be embellished. And when you embellish um, whatever discussion across the media, it gives a certain perception that, oh, there's no food at all. And we've seen this in other fora, and, and these debates also uh, trickle on, or there's a cyclical issue as far as we're concerned on these very political debates. And the twists and turns that tend to uh, be attached to them do you think that this very debate, and you are advocating for it because you feel that people need to know, could be made in a very decorous atmosphere in, with your own experiences and perception about the way we undertake political debates in our country? I, I am for open, constructive discussion of the state of our economy, the state of our security system, and the state for the condition in which we live as people. I am for it. I, but I also believe that even when we put these very sensitive issues out for debate, we have to be very decorous in discerning in the way we, we debate them. With your expert, as, do you as, think we'll be decorous and discerning? The people and also the media. The media has a responsibility to be very decorous and be very respected in their reportage of issues like this. But I still believe that the, the sensitivity of this issue has nothing to, to do with the, the security, even away our intelligence or something. It's not about the number of ambitions we have, the firepower and all those things. People must be a state secret. But this is a condition, the state in which our security agencies operate. It's 
very important, and we must know. And we should, when we know, we can, we can take pressure on our legislators to work in a way that will enhance the, 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 the capacity of the security institutions to be able to protect us. Mm. We, we have seen with the, the increasing number of hidden security at the level of armed robbery, at the level of pickpocketing, at the highest level in this particular country. And if this is happening at the time that our security agencies are ill-equipped and ill-resourced, then it has a lot of implications for, for, for the forward march of this country. But I still believe that even the media knows that they should be very circumspect in the reportage of this, of this nature. But the fact that it will be politicized and ill reported that then be that would be a credit to me to democracy in this country. Mm. Well, Dr. Alidu, as we say, it, uh, please uh, try and position yourself well. You know, we're using a, a GPS system to do the communication. Now, uh, Ibrahim. Brother, I think we are almost singing the same song. Mm. The military You're exists. not singing the same song. You're no, saying it shouldn't be mentioned at all. That's no, not the same song we're singing. I said it should be discussed on the committee of the whole. No. But, but he, not he, on the plenary. Well, the two of them are saying so it, should now, be, now it should be put before the public. The public that you I represent in do, parliament. The doctor doesn't know the difference between the plenary and the committee of the whole. The oh, committee of the you, whole. You can't say that to no, a no, political No, that's why I said that it, it should not be debated. It is debated. Like the way we debate sensitive issues that borders on the national security and the territorial integrity of the country. Clearly speaking, my brother, we are not talking of only the territorial integrity within Ghana. We are, the military exists to defend us against external aggression. Then when you come and go and tell the external aggressors that now me, I don't have even ties when you come and attack me to defend myself. I don't have even this when you attack me to do Then it means you are portraying to the international community that your military is a... It's ill-equipped. It, it's ill-equipped or it's a two-flat bulldog or it's a white elephant. That's, that's your... So your clearly approach. you weaken your security system more. That is why we are saying that if those sensitive issues are, you are bringing are issues of facts, then let's come with the 275 members of parliament. Let's debate them. That are, you know, committee of the whole, we don't even allow even the media to go there. You don't go, we discuss them dispassionately. And then you dare not go political because they are st sensitive issues. I can give you instances when we've discussed even those issues against that. There was a time when it came to Ghana, Ivory Coast border dispute. That was seen, we had to go quickly behind closed doors when they started amassing their military on our border. Those sensitive issues are not discussed at okay. the way we discuss MPP, NDC. So these were issues we are saying, oh, no, my brother, Ahmed, your issues point has been made. you are raising, and there will be a point uh, when those estimates Ahmed, will come. Ahmed, Ahmed, your point has been this, made. Is this, this is Ahmed. This. Then, you know we are debating the Major Dro, principles of the budget. Major Dro, Major Dro, Major Dro, Major, Major Dro raises concern. He doesn't raise a concern about you don't have equipment. He says you have equipment, but the allocation, or in simple language, the money to make sure the equipment are running is not there. He said vehicles, but no time. I haven't finished, uh, Ahmed. Now, secondly, to make sure your personnel work adequately, they're supposed to undertake certain routines. They undertake those routines efficiently. They are not able to because the allocations for them to get the supplies are not there. Okay. So at what point do you think we need to come to the, a conclusion on this and say, well, you representing the people out there, you should talk about it so that the people that you represent also need to know. The budget is debated twice. Are you aware of that? I know. The debate we are doing now is just about the government policy or the principle, just the principles of the budget. We are not going to the estimates yet. We are ending the principles debate today. And if you listen to the tape clearly, even the speaker put it to Major. That Major, what you are doing, we are not there yet. Wait, when we come to the details of the budget and that do the estimates and the figures. So there, your committee will go and scrutinize it very well and bring their report. So it is when you bring your report that this and this and this and that are lacking. Then at that point, so the opportunity, the speaker said, the opportunity exists for you to do what you want to do today. But don't just go, <laughs> don't just, 
Don't just go today and start. You put the principles of the budget Ahmed, aside has been and be doing this. So clearly speaking, Major Roland, Roland, the opportunity Major Roland, your conclusion your remarks. Uh, you I give to. you 15 seconds, unfortunately. Major Dro. Yes, please, your concluding remarks. Uh, uh, my, my, my younger brother in the studio there said uh, uh, what I said should have been discussed at the Committee of the Whole. Committee of the Whole is, it doesn't come in here. My name was advertised to talk about security. I belong to Defense and Interior Committee. My name was published. It wasn't published on the uh, Committee of the Whole. And if my name had been mentioned, my name had been called by the by the, the speaker to talk on the floor about security issues, what the, the, the budget has for the security agencies. That's exactly what I said. And I, like, uh, just as I mentioned, it does not border on any security implications, security threat, nothing. I did not talk. I, like, I also mentioned that there was a, a period, this budget time in Parliament, and it's only one occasion that they brought the, the, the specifications of uh, combat uh, weapons that I stopped Parliament from discussing at the plenary. So, 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 so the conclusion you shouldn't have made this, but you are saying this is for public. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, what I'm saying is that the security agencies need need to perform. Okay. And they can perform if government resolves them adequately. Government should resolve them adequately for them to provide adequate security. For the citizenry. That okay. is my conclusion. Thank you very much. And uh, we've had on the line Major Retired Derek Odro. And uh, well, last to conclude his comments is uh, Dr. Ali Duseidu. Dr. Mr. Ali Duseidu. Yes, please, your concluding remarks, sir. I, I think security is very important. Yeah, even if and sensitive? I know governments are constrained by budget. But even in the, in the, in the light of this constraint, government should be able to authoritatively allocate resources to centers that are very vital and deserving of these particular resources. And in doing this, government, as in, as in democracy, must be guided by transparency and accountability. And we can only hold government to account mm. when, we have, when we are privy to some of this information. Okay. Thank you very much. Dr. Ali Duseidu is a political science lecturer with the University of Ghana, and thanks for joining us. It's been a brilliant debate for the last 40 minutes, I believe, and uh, you've been so much agitated. Uh, the point is, an issue of security is an issue of security. Which one is sensitive and which one is not? But why did Major make the differentiation that this one, let's go, let's not discuss this in plenary, this one, let's go and say, right. is it the one who will be differentiating this for plenary, this for not for plenary? What is, for the place we decide that everything for plenary, let's go. If we decide that this one, the security issues should not be debated at the plenary, then we stop it. Ahmed but Ibrahim, he should not be the one. He's a member of parliament this for one behind plenary, This one not behind and, plenary. And uh, thanks for joining me. Thank okay. you too, Mangu. All right. <laughs> Hope to have you sometime again. Uh, we're taking a break. When we come back, we'll, we'll continue our discussions on the issue of uh, security, military, public perception about corruption, etc. And uh, Mamavi Usu Abwaji will be doing that.